Hello lovely crafty friends, welcome to Love Builds Up Crafts. I am Sasha and today we're going to be looking at how to make this marbly, sparkly, lovely and all the other words ending with Lee cards. So <laughs> let's get marbly. <laughs> so I'm starting with the 3.5 by 8.5 inch panel of 300 GSM cardstock. Guys, you really need a strong cardstock for this and you also need a really juicy ink pad. So I'm grabbing my wow embossing ink pad. Take time to condition it with the conditioning tool if you do need to. And I'm just going to go ahead and rub my ink pad onto my card in a wave-like motion to create that brush stroke shape. Uh, you're rubbing at the same time patting. <laughs> To be honest, this is really not the best way to ink up your panel, but we're just using it to sort of mark the area of our brush stroke, so don't worry too much about it. It's kind of like, you know, when the dog pees to mark its territory. <laughs> it's the same thing, really. <laughs> So anyway, I'm now adding a layer of my chunky white ultra high gloss embossing powder. Yeah, that is a mouthful even for a big mouth like mine. <laughs> So this stuff is really amazing and this technique will only work with this chunky powder. Thank you so much to my Instagram friend Kim for testing out the regular powder and letting me know that mm -mm, it will not work. So go ahead and use your chunky stuff. Okay, so now I really want to shape up my brush stroke. That's why I'm adding my embossing powder bit by bit. This is just going to help us get the shape that we want, which is why this chunky embossing powder is really great because you can just grab a bit of it and sprinkle it on and it doesn't make a huge big mess. Okay, so once you've heat embossed that, you're going to go ahead and start building up the layer of embossing powder. You need two layers of embossing powder for this technique to work. So I'm just heating up the area and then sprinkling some embossing powder until it smoothens out. I like doing it this way because you also save on your ink your embossing ink because you're not using any. So wait for that to cool down and then we're going to go ahead and start adding our markers. So I'm just making these um, rainbow-like shapes, curved arches, curved shapes <laughs> with my alcohol markers. <laughs> I've only tried this with alcohol markers so I don't know whether other markers would work but I think a sharpie would work or even highlighter pens, I'm sure that would work. And the colors I'm using there are the dual tones. I went for the really bold colors, the boldest colors that I could find in my uh, set of alcohol markers, which are from Tonic Studio. So this is the cheap stuff. You can use your co your co co Copic markers, they work just fine as well. <laughs> Guys, I'm really sorry if you hear like screaming in the background, it's the kids. I cannot shut them up for nothing. So let's all lose our marbles together. <laughs> Speaking of marble, oh, you see what I did there? Yeah, that was nice, right? Speaking of marble, go ahead and heat emboss your uh, panel and then you'll start to see your embossing powder move and merge with the ink from the alcohol markers and that effect is just so if you take your paper and just turn it that will allow the embossing powder to just flow and create this pattern and you're using your heat tool so to to sort of like direct it. So you combine the movement of your heat tool and uh, shift in the paper in different directions to get your marble like looking marbly. <laughs> Clearly my descriptions are still stuck in primary school. <laughs> So anyway, now I wanted to add a bit more interest to that panel and I do that by just heating up an area and then I'm going to sprinkle some of those chunks and lightly emboss them. Just a light bit of heat and that will give you this dotted pattern so you're not trying to melt the chunks into the previous layer, you're just slightly heating them on top. I hope that makes sense guys. <laughs> So another important thing that you really need to know is that uh, whilst you're doing this technique, don't focus your heat on one area for too long. You have to be moving it. You can see me moving my tool up and down a lot of times. That's how you get um, 
that effect without creating a patch because if you focus it on one area it will bubble and then it will create a patch in your beautiful smooth layer of um, embossing there so this was looking so good already but i wanted to add some gilding flakes and my camera was like no so i'm going to use this panel just to demonstrate how to add gilding flakes since my camera didn't capture it uh, so you just need a really small paint brush a detailing paint brush and then you're just going to dip it in your glue i'm using nuvo adhesive and then you're just going to draw on a line but you don't want a solid line you sort of want like a, a split line just don't make your line too perfect and then you're just going to wait for the glue to get tacky i'm just speeding this up for the sake of this video and once the glue is all nice and tacky you're going to go ahead and add your gilding flakes so what you do is you press them on definitely don't rub just put the gilding flake on top and then just press it down into the glue and then wait for that to dry as well just leave the gilding flakes on there and wait for it to dry then when it's dry take a brush i'm using this uh, brush from the back of an eraser a pencil eraser you just need a brush with strong bristles and then i'm just brushing that off so uh sometimes you might get that bit there that's not like nice to look at <laughs> there's no other way to describe it <laughs> it's just not nice so what you do is you just rub it off because it's just glue and because of the gloss of the embossing powder you can just easily rub it off and this is why i love this technique because you can make mistakes and get away with it so this is our final panel and just look at that guys the gold just really just took it up to the net level up oh, i just love it so anyway <laughs> sometimes you might get some warping with your panel what you do is you just turn it back and then just heat it from the back until it flattens out this usually works you might have to do this a couple of times if you're not going to stick it down to a card base immediately okay so i've got this die set here from the spellbinders paint your world collection and i'm just going to cut out some of the florals from the white from white cardstock this is just regular white cardstock and then i'm grabbing my uh gold watercolors there from amazon i will link everything in the description because i can't remember what they're called and i just added some sprinkles and then i'm going in and adding just like random swatches i don't know what to call them <laughs> And then I'm going to take my Harvest Gold cardstock from Tonic Studios. This is like my favorite mirror card. And I'm going to cut out my paint brush and assemble it with some red line tape and glue there. I just like using red line tape for mirror card because it um, doesn't cause streaks like glue. Because sometimes glue can cause some streaks in your uh, mirror card. So that's our paint brush all done. Just look at that gold shiny. I love gold, guys. So let's grab the rest of our bits and finish the card. This is our finished card. I've just propped up my paintbrush with some foam tape. And then I've also added these beautiful dewdrop gems from Lucy's shop. I am so obsessed with this, as you can tell how many I added. <laughs> The sentiment there is from Pink Fresh Studios, uh, Rainbow Sentiments, and it says, I hope you're smiling today. Aww, so cute, right? So, I made this card as part of a monthly discovery hop over on Instagram. You are more than welcome to join us. And this month's theme was Rainbow slash Autism Awareness. So I have three sons in total and the youngest two have autism. So this theme was really very close to my heart. I just wanted to make a card that excites their sense of sight because my kids are both visual learners. They were really excited when they saw the card, even though they can't touch it, of course, but they could definitely see it. And on my Instagram post for this card, there's a little video of my boy saying hello so please follow me on instagram if you're not already and pop by the post to say hello to the boys <laughs> i hope you really love this card because i am in love with it and thank you so much for watching this video please check out my instagram for more content because i can't be as consistent as i want to be on youtube 
because life and my blog as well i try and like post when i can but life is just life okay it just takes over everything but i definitely try to be more consistent with posting on instagram so please follow me on there i'll so appreciate it and you can also find my videos on the wow embossing channel i post there every other wednesday and there's a playlist called creative member sasha that you can find my videos so thank you for your time and have a lovely day bye